Chris, I consider my double rifle to be the ultimate hunting rifle. I still see a lot of clients bringing heavy calibre bolt action rifles to Africa for their safari. And I don't know, I think there's a misconception that the bolt actions tend to be more accurate than a double. Do you have any thoughts on that? Well, sure, and, and you, you use the right word, a misconception. What you find is that most of the time those comparisons are being made between an open-sided rifle or a rifle like a double that's being used most frequently open-sided versus a scoped bolt action rifle. So the challenge you run into is not with the inherent accuracy of either weapon, but the ability, or rather in this case the inability, of the shooter to hold a consistent sight picture from shot to shot. Now to give you an example on that, a uh, double rifle with a good size front bead, just open sighted, is somewhere in the two, two and a half millimeter range. So to put that in perspective on target, you're going to be covering up about six inches of your target at 50 yards. So you take that out to 100 yards and now you're kind of at the 10 inch mark. So you can imagine how difficult it is to hold that bead covering 10 inches of a target at 100 yards in exactly the same spot, knowing how much of it, how little of the target you can actually see. You know, by comparison, if you take a scope with a fine reticle in there at 100 yards at, at, at six or eight power, you're covering up just a fraction of an inch. So the shooter has the ability to bring that rifle back to the exact point of aim more readily, and in turn, they get more consistent results. So it's not necessarily that the, the bolt action rifle is more accurate and the double rifle is less accurate. It's really all about how consistently the shooter can go from sight to sight back on the, on the target. Now, having said that, there are limitations to both. The double rifle is not the ideal thousand yard target rifle. In the same way that an I thousand yard target rifle is not the ideal Cape Buffalo rifle. So there's always a bit of give and take. But one of the things that's important to understand about the accuracy of a double rifle is really the regulation process because that's one of those things that gets talked about a lot, quite frankly written about a lot, and not everything that you see or hear or read is, is actually very mm -hmm. factual. So if I had here, Mark, in the barrels of this rifle, let's say a light or a laser that I could shine down each yeah, of the yeah. barrels, and we saw those lights projected onto a wall 50 yards away, you probably in your mind would expect to see them perfectly parallel like the bullets would print, right? Mm -hmm. It's not actually the case. If you think of your relative point of aim here, double rifle barrels here, the light shining from the right barrel would actually be low and to the left of your point of aim, whereas the left barrel would be low and to the right. So they sort of make an X pattern or a cross, if you will. And the logic is as follows. The two barrels being side by side, parallel, when the right barrel is fired, the barrel wants to move up and away from its center of gravity, okay? Mm -hmm. So, trigger's pulled, primer struck, powder ignites, projectile begins moving down the bore. Now, these are kind of in nanoseconds, so bear with me here. As a bullet begins to progress, that progress down the barrel, down the bore, the rifle immediately goes into recoil. So at nanosecond one, the bullet's here, the rifle's here. Nanosecond two, here, etc. And the rifle will move up in an arc away, okay? So the regulation process is not just about locking the barrels parallel, but effectively timing them in such a way that the bullet departs the barrel along this arc and trajectory at such a time along that arc that it can reliably hit the target out here. So to give you a layman's example, think of a quarterback throwing a football, American football, throwing a, throwing a ball to a receiver and the receiver having to run to a certain point and the quarterback throwing the ball to kind of intercept the two. That's a lot what a lot like the regulation process is at a double rifle. That sounds very complicated though, Chris. Well, it, it, it's certainly time consuming. I mean, there's, there's a bit of science to it and there's a little bit of, uh, of skill obviously involved, but, but one of the things you'll see to the point of complication is that there's a trend over the last 10 or 15 years for what we call do-it-yourself regulation. Now, the argument from some manufacturers is that it enables the shooter to uh, adjust the rifle to a particular type of ammunition. Well, between you and I, that's, that's kind of like saying that we're going to build a car and you can build the transmission the way that you want to, okay? That's, that's not really what you're paying for in a double rifle. At Heim, we hand regulate every rifle. We regulate them in a traditional manner, which is to say we use the, uh, the wedge at the muzzle to converge the barrels to move them farther apart. 
one of the expensive parts about regulation is that actual cost of ammunition and the manpower. So if you see something out there that um, says regulate it yourself, it's not necessarily because of the flexibility as much as it may be for the cost savings involved. Now, to that point, let's speak to accuracy out of a double rifle. I hear all the time, you know, what can I expect? How accurate is the rifle, etc. At Heim, we guarantee open-sided, 50 meters, four shots into two inches or less, or the rifle doesn't leave the factory. So, yes, it is complicated. It takes a lot, quite a bit of time to do. You're talking about anywhere from 60 to 80, sometimes maybe 100 rounds being shot through each rifle before they meet that accuracy standard. But it's an area that we don't make any compromises. We want to make sure that when you get the rifle, it's working the same way it was at the factory, shooting as well as we guarantee it to, and it's ready for you to take a field. And I get all the fun part. And you get all the fun part, yeah. We'll take care of the hard part. <laughs>